Hello, hello guys. Hello everyone. Can you hear me and see me correctly? Yes, fantastic. Welcome everyone. It's so nice to see you all today. Uh, we are going to be starting in just uh, 30 seconds, one minute. So um, you can see our tech notes in the slide that you have in front of you. So just take a few seconds, get yourself set up and say hi in the chat. I know some of you are already jumping in there, but please don't be shy. Tell us hi and where you're coming from. And we are going to be starting in just one minute um, and enjoy the music which is uh, by our own host today. He composed his music, so enjoy. Okay, let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good everything in between. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Clara. You can call me Clary as well. I'm calling in from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I am a global experience leader at Unsettled and also one of your global passport hosts. Um, and today I'm joined by Unsettled co-founder and also global passport host, Michael Youngblood, Michael wave hi, yay. And also I'm gonna see, I'm seeing Flavi as well, part of the Unsettled team. So welcome everyone. Um, I wanna give a special welcome for those of you who are joining us uh, for the first time. Uh, the Global Passport is a new virtual experience uh, from Unsettled. We launched a pilot back in April after we run our 100 in-person retreats and we decided to bring an experience online and grow our community in a new way. Uh, each month we pick a rich in topic, a theme that we are really intellectually curious about and we explore it together in a few different ways. And this month's theme is storytelling. Uh, one area, one key area that we like to emphasize in the Global Passport is co-creating uh, with our community and that's what you're going to see happen today. This session is being led by one of our members of the Global Passport, Ved Dar Luz, who is going to guide us today through some storytelling to help us uncover some ways in which we can change our life story by where you live and also by connecting with people from your power places. So, Verdad Luz, welcome. It's wonderful to have you today. The floor is all yours. All right, so excited to be here. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> all right, well, it's so, such a powerful time collectively. At the end of the talk today, uh, I'll share a little bit about some of the big astrological cycles that are present right now. Um, huge initiations going on and also a lot of questioning and hesitations, maybe a little uncertainty here and there with a couple planets retrograde like Mars and, and Mercury, uh, but we'll get there later. Um, I'll start to share the screen and we'll, we'll start the side show here and I can't wait to talk to you about power places today and, and astrolocality. So let me start to share. This going. And then, so, but I still see your video. We Not can sure see, I, we can see the screen really well. But can I shut off your video, hide thumbnail video maybe? There you we go. Have in the corner, you are, you're going to be able to see. Okay, awesome. Okay, cool. All right, well, storytelling, um, lifestyle design and locational strategies. So this talk is, is all about relocation astrology. And if you haven't heard of it, maybe you've heard this term astrocartography before, um, cartography maps, astro star, star maps. So we're actually looking at how you can align with your energy lines of enterprise, empowerment, and evolution. Um, I gave, the, I gave something similar to this talk a few years ago, actually at the Digital Nomad Conference in uh, Lisbon, Portugal. 
And, uh, and so this is going to riff off of some of that and, and what I share with clients as well. It's so exciting for me. So I want to give you some background about my work, uh, about my studies in, in locational astrology and astrology and, and also just traveling around the world, uh, traveled quite a bit. So the first thing is just this question of what the most important asset is today. And I think with all of us, you know, right now with COVID and, you know, political situations around the world, especially in the U.S., it's, it's really essential that we know ourselves. Uh, the Oracle of Delphi, I was blessed to be in Greece a couple years ago and visited you know, a place that was a pilgrimage for me, was uh, the Oracle of Delphi. And it says there, you know, know thyself. And for me, when I first came to astrology, it was, it was an unfolding of this path of self-awareness, of learning about um, who I am on all these different levels of being and my patterns. And so um, I invite you today to, to open your heart to know thyself more. And, um, and at this time, you know, when we are uncertain of a lot of things, the more we know ourselves, the more empowered we can be to be able to be transitional, to be able to be adaptable, and to know our ways of empowering ourselves and others um, at such a critical time where we all need to step up in such a big way. So trying open our mind and our heart. And here you see the lungs. And I just wanted to share with you, um, you know, the preciousness of life. Um, when I was 15, I, I had a surgery with my leg. I have a metal rod in my femur. And uh, that, that was really significant. I broke it when I was two. It grew back too long. And we had to put an inch and a half of bone or cut out an inch and a half of bone and put a metal rod in. And um, that really, um, you know, brought me to a, an awareness at 15 years old of how precious it is to be able to walk, let alone dance and hike and climb mountains and swim and do all these things that at that point I, I promised myself that I would do because I knew what it was like for four months to not be able to do any of that or even talk to my muscles and my leg. Um, and with my lung, um, when I was 17, I collapsed both of my lungs spontaneously, um, literally called the spontaneous pneumothorax. Um, I did nothing to cause it. Later on, about six, about seven, eight years later, as I started studying shamanism, and then I learned about astrology, and I started to study the symbols, I realized that that moment of collapsing my lungs was like a shamanic initiation, and that if I had been born in indigenous cultures, I might have been you know, chosen to, to, to step into this shamanic role because I had survived a, a really crazy experience that not everyone uh, survives. And... Um, that experience for me, uh, I talk about in my second book, Aquarius Dawns. What I learned so much in that journey was how precious life is. And I received so much love in a moment of, of intense, intense release and, and surrender, you know, and, and pain and, and confusion. But it was such a gift to have at such a young age, but it really made me aware of the importance of seizing every moment of life. So my big mantra, like maybe some of you is like carpe diem, you know, seize the moment, seize the day. So that kind of compelled me to start traveling in my early 20s. And um, I left a, a full ride at, at university and I went to Israel. Um, and I, I'm not Jewish, but I learned about kibbutzim and that I could work on a commune with, uh, you know, other Europeans and other people from around the world and give my service and you know, go party and, you know, play on the land and do all these things that my sheltered uh, California life knew nothing about. So I did that and it really opened up the whole world for me and all these synchronicities unfolded and I really learned about the magic of travel and, uh, and opening your heart to what's possible if you just empty out to that experience. As I went on, I got really fascinated with Southeast Asia and I went to India and Southeast Asia but I started studying the Mayan calendar at that time, and that was about 2004 or five. And from that space, I was so curious about this 2012 end date. And that's a picture of me, December 21st, 2012, under the pyramid of Chichen Itza in the Yucatan, where I celebrated that peak moment uh, collectively for us, a transition in the calendar and in, in our collective world. Um, I was skeptical of astrology, like maybe some of you might be or have been. I always liked reading little columns, but, you know, until I was in India and I, I met a partner who started to read my chart for me, and I re also received a Vedic astrology reading, Indian astrology, 
and Tibetan astrology reading. Um, and they both blew me away. Um, and then my partner really reflected to me about uh, what we call the, the god and goddess, the masculine and feminine, the Mars and Venus in the chart. And I started to see all of my patterns really strong in relationships. So what I wanted uh, to be attracted to consistently in my life, I saw through the Venus position. And what I wanted to be honored for, and what, how, I, how I pursued energy with my Mars position, it broke open my consciousness. You know, I just saw that this was a really like a laser pointed psychology. And it made me, I'd always been fascinated with psychology, so it made me want to really study astrology deeper. Um, by the time I was 26, 27, I went, started going to astrology conferences and just dipping my toe into a lot of different modalities. And I decided once I came to locational astrology that this was the area I wanted to niche into because I knew that I wanted to continue to travel. I was only in my mid-20s. And I wanted to be more strategic with it and, and learn where my power places were and maybe learn where some challenges might be and some, some magical places that I didn't even know about for myself. So it was like incredibly eye-opening that this was even possible to do. Um, so I started to niche into that and then have over the years taken on a lot more business with my work and done time mapping for clients and, uh, and human design is a big area that I focus on too, if you've heard of that system. Um, over time, I've lived in about 42 countries or traveled there um, all over the planet. And, uh, and I still want to go back, you know, however that's going to look uh, in the months and years ahead. Uh, that's a picture of me in Morocco <laughs> kissing the snake. And then uh, in India, you know, beautiful family there in Turkey and Cappadocia. And then in my home in Colorado, where I spent 10 years, I now live in Asheville, North Carolina. And then the Atacama Desert, one of my favorite places in Chile. I hope you guys can get there. They have the biggest telescopes in the world. <laughs> so um, India, like I said, this uh, great awakening for me. And lastly, just a couple things about astrology. You know, uh, I've written two books on astrology, and the more I study it, the more it just blows me away. The accuracy of how it describes this moment and relationships and our, our paths of business and soul development. Um, you know, it is... Uh, it's something that can be applied in almost every area of life from studying politics. I just taught a class on the U S elections to choosing the best dates and times for our business um, or anything for a travel or for a marriage uh, partnership. Um, you know, it's in the Bible. It's written right into the beginning of the Bible, the, the, the signs in the firmament that God gave uh, the wise men and the new Testament are, are astrologers, the Chaldean astrologers. Um, Alexander the Great used uh, astrology in his campaigns. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, said that uh, any, uh, any medical doctor that doesn't practice astrology shouldn't call themselves a, a doctor. Um, it goes on, you know, Shakespeare references it. Um, the Islamic Empire, which was the height of civilization for 700 years during the Middle, middle Ages, um, it was all run by uh, astrology. I mean, medieval astrology was a big, uh, a very big deal at the time. Uh, Columbus used, you know, astrolabes to travel around the world and navigators who knew the stars. Today, Wall Street executives and entrepreneurs and business owners use it and financial astrologers are, tend to make a lot of money. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then relationships, you know, that's, that's where most of us get, get really excited about this tool. It's very practical that way. So this generation um, that I want to speak about, most of us are probably here, you know, um, the Sagittarius generation is something that we can talk about through the position of three planets, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto. And you'll see the dates there. Um, what this means is that the outer planets, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto move very slowly. And so when they go through a sign, they really infuse that sign with what they mean. For the Neptune and Sagittarius generation, my generation, we have a visionary utopian energy in us. We, we wanna travel the world, we wanna be teachers, um, we want to create retreats, you know, we have this potential of like, if we can, if we can imagine it, um, then we can really transform consciousness and bring people onto these quests. And I know, I mean, for instance, you know, we have Michael and Unsettled, um, I know he's in the Uranus and Sagittarius generation and Uranus is about a revolutionary or uh, an in innovative or inventive or a new paradigm way of bringing Sagittarius, which is the world traveler, the nomad, the quest, seeking truth and, and finding meaning in our lives. 
And then the Pluto and Sagittarius generation has come to transform what it means to be a world citizen, to be a traveler, and to bring truth and philosophy to the world, Sagittarius. So just want to say that this is really our time to, to use this tool, um, which is so empowering. So um, what do we use astrolocality for? Well, it is a disruptive technology. You've heard that term quite a bit, um, especially for entrepreneurs and digital nomads, because it can prepare you to be more strategic for your travel or for your relocation. Um, you can also find your resonant community and tribe. Uh, you can find supportive and enriching relationships on all levels, from very intimate personal love to collaborative partnerships, business partnerships. Um, you know, there's so, so many different kinds of relationships that we can tap into through locational astrology. Business success or bigger financial growth in your life, and then re, if you're reinventing your career or really wanting to find a certain kind of fulfillment in a certain kind of career, we can look at that as well. And just to feel creatively self-actualized and spiritually fulfilled, this is one of the, the best reasons to apply locational astrology in your life. So here's the principles. And the principles are that there are better and worse places to realize our goals, to manifest our dreams, and to find success in various areas of life. So I'm sure that everyone has had some experiences with travel or just relocating where either the place you came from or the place you went to really was challenging. You know, there were there was some relationships there, there were some, some, um, some experiences that went down there, uh, the, the land itself maybe, that was just really, really hard for you to do what you were trying to do. And then, you have these other places, right? That just everything was flowing. Synchronicity was guiding the whole process. Everything felt meaningful. Definitely, this is where we can see the language of astrolocality informing that process. So different places hold different energies for us. Second point is that it's not just like the general location like Colorado or Asheville, North Carolina. It's how your soul is interacting or interfacing with that location. And that's where we relocate your chart as if you were born in these different locations. So again, the situations that you experience and the lessons you encounter are all about how your astrology interacts with that location. And you'll get this more as we, as we look at some, some maps and things. So, um, you know, when you... You can study energetic factors not only permanently for you in a location, but also over time. So what I mean is that we could look at forecasting. So if you're going to take a trip, for instance, and you're going to be there for two months, three months, um, when would be the best time to go, like next year, let's say? Um, that's where we would apply cyclocartography, the cycles in that area at that time. We can also do this if you're going to move somewhere and see what energies might be there the first year you're there, second year you're there. Um, so a lot of the times what we experience, if we're only in a location for a short amount of time, actually has to do with the energies that are there just at that time. Because when you move somewhere, you have to take a little bit of time to you move into the energies that are there. Uh, it really depends on how close you are to these energy lines, which you'll see in a moment here. So again, there's no perfect place but there's a more ideal location. And so we're just weighing out the priorities, you know, like what are you intending? Which places support you? Or where are you going? And then how best can you navigate what's there? You know, if you're really committed to that place that you're living, like a lot of us are right now, you know, how best can you use the energies that are there for you? So those are the principles. Now, here's the, the um, there's, there's two main tools I'm gonna to show to you with astrolocality. Um, one is called astrocartography and the other is called local space. And these are different kinds of energy influences or astrological lines of influence. Um, if you've studied astrology at all, you know that there's four angles in astrology. The ascendant, which is our rising sign, our outer personality and our mask, has to do with our energy and our body. And then the midheaven is the angle of career at the top of the sky. So this is what we're known for, our reputation, um, our, our public persona, our, some of our mission here. Um, so very career-based. Then the descendant is the angle of partnership opposite the ascendant. 
And that relates to, of course, relationships, collaborations, others, attractions. And the opposite, or the other angle is the IC, the imum coli, which is the area of the home, the internal state, the roots in the family. So what happens in astrology is when you move around the planet, when you move different longitudes and latitudes, you might have a planet like Jupiter or Saturn or these different planets that are on one of these angles. And if a planet is on one of those angles, it becomes like a highlighted or a spotlighted planet on the stage of your life in that location. So if you have a planet on the angle of career in a location, it's really going to dictate a lot of what you do in that location professionally. Then we just have to ask, is that an energy that you want? Is that part of your current path? Is it something you're calling in? Same thing with the relationships. You know, if you want a very harmonious relationship, long-term relationship, we want to see certain planets either on the angle of partnership or not on the angle of partnership in order to secure that stable type of relationship. So that's the principle of locational astrology in terms of astrocartography. Here you see the four angles, the midheaven, which is the MC right here. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and then here's the, the descendant over here, uh, this, this angle right here. He's the ascendant, AS. And then the IC is down here. Well, it's opposite the MC, so over here. So those are the four angles, all right? And then, oh, that, that's what I wanted to show you with this is this is a great example. So here's Schwarzenegger, who was born in Graz, Austria. You can see, just look at the angles here, 24 Pisces. And then over here is Cancer rising. And then over, um, over here is like Capricorn descendant. Okay, so this, watch how much this shifts when he goes to California. So in California, he has the Scorpio angle of career. Back in Gras, it was Pisces, okay? And then over here, look, it's like it's reversed. He has a Capricorn rising instead of a Cancer rising. Yeah, that's interesting. And that's very important because that means that relationships from his birth chart become something that he wears on his surface every day, his outer personality. That's the kind of location. There's only one kind of zone of the planet longitudinally where that will happen. And I've seen again and again, I've seen in my own life and in clients that if your seventh house, your relationship house becomes your first house in a location, which has to happen halfway around the world almost, um, you can attract in a lot of significant relationships in your life. Um, so that's one way we could look at, at, at astrolocality. Okay, we'll look more at Arnold in a moment. Here's the other kinds of influences. They're called directional influences. It's local space lines. So these are archetypal or energetic influences that stretch across the planet. So they're like uh, the dominant patterns of behavior that we will exhibit if you are close to these local space lines. Um, they're like your personal feng shui line. Um, so let me show you examples. Very easy to see this. Here's Brad Pitt. And here is his birthplace in Oklahoma. Okay. And these are his local space lines that are stretching all over the, the world. You can follow them around the circumference of the planet. So if you, um, you know, Brad's mom or dad on the day of his birth pointed in the direction of Venus or the moon, Eventually, that direction goes through Santa Fe and all the way down right above Hollywood and LA. Now, here's a fascinating thing. You know, the moon and Venus, the moon represents our domestic life, our home, our sense of nourishment. This is where Brad has lived most of it is his adult life. Um, is, uh, Venus represents the feminine, the goddess. It represents our art and our aesthetics, our sense of beauty, and also how we earn money. So all of those three areas. Well, here's where Brad earns millions of dollars of a film. Um, both of his partners, that we, his significant partners we know about, Jennifer Aniston and Angelina Jolie, were born down here. So they were born on his Venus line, goddess line. Um, and of course, uh, he's an artist. He's an actor. And his art is based in, in Hollywood. 
So there's Venus, very, very strong. Uh, he's also very successful. And his Venus and Moon are in the sign of Capricorn. So that gets us to the next point, which is when you go to one of these locational areas, you don't just get the Venus or the Moon or whatever planet is there, what that planet means as a symbol. You get that story, that storytelling of that planet as it is in your chart. So whatever sign it's in, whatever house or area of life that it, it, it lives in will be, become a major theme for you. Um, whatever house that it rules in your life, because every planet rules a certain area of your life, like relationships or like creativity or like community. So you get all of that and then you get the aspects that that planet makes to other planets. So like an opposition or a square or a trine, that's the story of that planet. Is it a planet that is really flowing and you know, supportive for you or is it challenged in some ways? And that's when I'm sitting there interpreting the charts and the maps with you, we're storytelling how you might experience that planet given the entire story that's in your chart. And the closer you live to one of these lines, the more dynamic you live that story, meaning the more extreme you'll live it. So sometimes we don't really want to be right on top of a planetary line because unless it's the best planet for us, you know, it's in a very uh, healthy sign and house and it's just really happy planet. Um, we probably don't live, want to live right on top of the line. It really depends on a lot of factors. It depends on our intentions again. All right, so here's, Here's some examples of how you would use locational astrology for career or vocation, mission, calling. So the different planets, are, again, are different archetypes. They're different teachers. They're different characters, right? And so if you want to have a lot of visibility, you want to be in leadership, maybe you even want a, creative, a high creative function in your career, there's the sun on the angle of career. I know for me, the only place in the world where that's true is in Iceland. So I really want to go to Iceland. Um, but um, this is, uh, I've never been there. But um, this is if the sun is on the angle of career. Now, if the moon is there, this will be a location where you would be more of a nurturer. You would be more like the great mother energy. You would, uh, if you want to be like a massage therapist or you want to be in the healing profession, that could really work. Um, Venus on the angle of career, if you want to work with women or you want to be in fashion or beauty um, or, or create events for people, right? Or talk about image a lot, right? This is Venus related things. Now, if Mars is on the area of career, this is a really passionate place for you in terms of career. You want to be driven. You want to be ambitious. You could be very successful. You could be a little defensive with your career path, but you're very, very driven. You can be... Um, competitive as well and entrepreneurial. Jupiter on the angle of career is one of the best uh, planets to have there for opportunities, for being inspired, for like fortune kind of rolling things out for you. Um, I'll, de I'll describe a little bit of my own Jupiter in a minute on the angle of career. Um, so if you're a teacher, definitely, definitely a great uh, line to know about. Saturn, Saturn on the angle of career can bring more heavy responsibility a sense of duty and obligation in our career. And we have more pressures. Now we can be really rewarded if we work hard, if we discipline ourselves. So uh, Saturn can, can be actually a great planet to have on career if you're really ready to put a lot of energy towards it. Um, Uranus, if we want to reinvent ourselves um, or like work in technology, emergent technology, disruptive technology, we want to be in a startup or we love change. We love adaptation. We love the new. We love the fresh. We, we kind of thrive on uncertainty. That's Uranus in the area of career. If we want something stable, we wouldn't want that. Neptune is much more about art, artistic energies, idealism. Uh, it's more dreamy. It's more mystical. It's more poetic. It's spiritual. So it's not a clear path around our career. It's much more kind of let it come through you. Be ready for some things to just shift on their own. Spirit is guiding the process. Can be a great place for artists and visionaries of all kind. And then Pluto is a place when it's on the angle of career, there's a lot of power moving to, through this location for us. Um, we can influence others. We can be a big impactor 
Um, but we can have the control issues that can come with Pluto. We can have some manipulation going on in the workplace in some way, some shadows, some, some darker energies that we have to navigate because Pluto is the Lord of the underworld. His other name was Hades, God of the underworld. So this can be a very successful place, but it can also be a very intense location. And we really have to look at how you work with Pluto in your chart. Okay. So um, I'll, before I go start looking at the maps, this is one example. Uh, um, let me see if there's a, 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 you know, burning question that somebody has. Um, I know that's been a lot of information in a short amount of time. I talk fast sometimes, but um, if there's a burning question, maybe uh, Clary, if, if anyone has um, anything, you could just let me know and I can answer that. Yes, I see um, someone raising their hand. Be Oliver, do you want to put that in chat if you want? Um, and then I, and then we can take it from there. So I see a question that says, I saw Chiron, I think, or Kieran at the bottom of the list. Did you miss that? I think that's... Yes, I did. Um, Chiron, my Chiron. second book is about Chiron. So I very, very into Chiron. Chiron locations. Chiron is known as the wounded healer. He's also known as the mentor and the coach and the guide and a very important symbol in astrology. So Chiron locations can be a lot about healing. Uh, <clears throat> they can bring up, they, they tend to bring up wounds for us. It could be physical, emotional, spiritual, or mental, but they bring up the wounds so that we will be compelled to heal. Usually we can find healers and then we can also become a healer, <clears throat> excuse me, or a coach or a mentor or a guide for others. So they're very powerful locations. And then we have one more question that says, uh, astro.com has an app, and I'm wondering if that's the same as you are speaking about. Um, I'm not showing the astro.com app, but it is really good place to start. Um, I'm not showing it because um, I don't wanna mislead people because the, the challenge is um, you can get some, some good basic information. And the nice thing with astro.com is that they have Google like inter, inter integrated, um, which I don't in my software. But um, when I work with clients, I can pull up the Google Maps and get very, very detailed if, if we want to go there. Um, the issue with that is if you just stop with astro.com's interpretation, you're not receiving how that planet is aspected or the story in your chart. I'll give you an example. It will say something like, if you have Venus in the area of partnership, this is the best place to find a relationship. You can have romance, the honeymoon energy, everything can be blissful. It's, you know, just go here and find love. But what if your Venus is in a square to Saturn and in opposition to Pluto? If you're my client, I would say that you can find love, but let's talk about what kind of relationships are gonna come to you there. There's gonna be a lot of intensity, Pluto, there could be some drama. There might be jealousy or control issues that could come up. These are some of the shadows of Pluto that will be more intensified in that location. Or Saturn squaring Venus. You might meet somebody there, but there is just this limitation. They already have a partner or they're much older than you. There's some kind of block or challenge with that Saturn. Or you might fall in love with someone you work with. That's another expression of that. So. What I'm saying is that you don't get the story of how you would experience that particular Venus line. So that's where it becomes uh, like, if you make a decision based off of uh, just looking at those maps, you could get a very inaccurate reading for, um, for what you might experience in a location. So I always say, if people wanna look at those maps to kind of like maybe open up some possibilities, that's great, but to make a decision about you know, where or when to go somewhere, you really need the whole story. And that's where, you know, sitting with, with myself or another locational astrologer is really important to get the full interpretation. So we have some more questions, but I think uh, we yeah, can let me, to the end and you can uh, move on. Yeah, I'll move forward. And then, um, and again, we're going to look up a couple uh, client charts or not client, but participant charts today. And I'll pull up some client charts. Um, so, just some more with the planets here and some of their keywords. 
I'm actually going to just get to some maps here so we have enough time. Um, you know, every planet has its gifts. It's, it's like, let's say, high side uh, positive energies that we might want and then has their challenges. No planet is perfect. Even, like we said, Venus or Jupiter has challenges as well, even though we tend to like them. There's challenges with all the planets. Um, Mercury, I'm gonna give you an example of Mercury in a minute, um, but Mercury lines can be really good for trade, for, for making deals, for business negotiation, studying, learning, also teaching, definitely communicating, um, being busy and active. This would be like a great location, uh, you know, if there was an unsettled retreat on your Mercury line. Um, you know, but we can be bus bu very busy, too busy. We can be mentally anxious as well, or scattered and distracted. Now here's, um, here's Steve Jobs. And I'm gonna show you something through a different kind of map called his geodetic map, which is a, another kind of tool we can use where we see how you interact with the spirit of a location, with what that, that location is all about. So I can't get too deep into the geodetic map and its meanings today, but basically, it's this idea that every location around the world has an angle of career and an ascendant. And this is based off of the Greenwich Meridian. This is a really fascinating tool that a lot of astrologers use to predict world events, like eclipses, uh, eclipses and where they land, for instance. We can predict things like, you know, uh, like hurricanes or like natural disasters or big political events. That's a lot of how the geodetic map is used, but we can also use it personally. And it shows a resonance, how we fit into the natural cultural energy of the place. So you, we can find through the geodetic map a place that actually has the same angle of career and the same ascendant as you have in your chart, essentially the same four angles. And you would have like a resonance with that location. There's some really cool examples of this, like of, um, if you know Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda, the great spiritual teacher, his center is in San Diego. And that is his geodetic place of resonance. It has the same career angle and the same ascendant angle, which you can see here, which would be um, right, I think it's right there on that cusp of, with the Capricorn and then the ascendant Pisces here. Um, so it's really cool. And for Steve Jobs, his Mercury, Mercury is rising in his geodetic chart or map right here, like through a, the, the whole of like the South and the North Bay. This, this line stretches pretty far for the Mercury line. And I mean, it's, it's absolutely so powerful because here you see the description, one of the descriptions for Mercury. I mean, I mean, who's more mercurial than Steve Jobs? He made the, the iPhone, the computer. I mean, all the technology that Mercury rules that, that so many of us use today is coming from Steve Jobs. And so, you know, the whole spirit of California as this innovative place, he just like fit into this place of ideas, right? Of information uh, that it still is today, right? So one example, we'll get to Steve Jobs a little bit more later too. Venus lines have an emphasis on pleasure and aesthetics and beauty women, partnerships, money, but we can be lazy, indulgent, and sometimes spend too much money. Here's my friend Freya, um, and this is funny because Freya was like Venus, like the, the goddess Freya in, in the Norse tradition is connected with Friday, the day, and Venus. Um, but Venus line for Freya goes through Prague, and she is a, a Tantra teacher, sacred sexuality teacher, and she, um, she co-taught and translated for another teacher for years, and probably is still doing it right now, um, in Prague, uh, right on this Venus line. And she's, so she's taught there, and she's translated there all about the topic of, of Venus, love, intimacy, affection. So that's one of the big expressions of that energy for her. It's also a Saturn line here. And so again, Saturn lines can bring professional energy into into our life and hard work. Now, I will, I'll share a little story about uh, Spain and Portugal for me. This is my Venus local space line right here. And so very close, to, this is very close to Lisbon. And, um, and it's also close to where the Boom Festival happens. The Boom Festival is like kind of like Burning Man. 
big, big European festival. I went in 2010, and that was when my first book came out. And what was so amazing was I applied to teach, and I got selected to teach the first workshop at the festival, you know, the big workshop stage. And from that experience, um, I sold a lot of books, which was awesome. Um, but I, um, I ended up doing a bunch of readings for people. So I made money back. I made actually all the money back I spent on my trip there, uh, just, just at the festival doing readings. So I had that Venus expression of earning resources, money. But right after my workshop, I met this woman who was really beautiful. She was Portuguese. She spoke Spanish. I speak Spanish. And I love, I love accents and I love Spanish particularly and being around a partner or a lover that can speak Spanish. So we were speaking Spanish. We were talking about all these cosmic things like Egypt and astrology and all this stuff. And my Venus is in Gemini. So again, Gemini rules things like accents and different cultures and just difference, you know, curiosity. And so here was this woman who was like, you know, Portuguese, but speaking Spanish with me, talking about all these great Gemini topics. And I was just like, you know, in love, you know, it's just like amazing. And then met so many cool friends that I stayed in touch with for a little bit. Um, I also got really into the music that was there. And after that experience, I started DJing, which I still do. And a lot of the music I started spinning, I was like exposed to there. And so Venus, again, our aesthetics, our sense of beauty, our artistic self can develop. Um, over the next uh, couple months or a month or so, I actually met up with her down in Southern Portugal and we traveled together right over this Venus line. And we went to Cordoba and Sevilla together. And so we were in Andalusia together. And I ended up writing about six or seven short stories and a lot of poetry in this location. Gemini is the sign of the writer. So part of my artistic energy is Gemini kind of stuff, writing, even speaking, teaching, or performing poetry. And right on this line, it was just going crazy. A few years later, again, like I said, I got selected to teach at the Digital Nomad Conference in Lisbon. And again, was very successful doing readings, um, had some great friendships developed there, um, strong feminine connections. Um, and I just love the, the land. You know, I love the, the, the Andalusia, um, I, I, I've loved Portugal the, the few times I've been there. Um, so I, I would like to be there right now, but I'm not. So, um, and then this is the moon rising and we get very impressed by the senses when the moon is rising. We get, we're emotionally very like turned on, you know? Um, it's like, we're just infused. We can be quite happy where the moon is rising depending on the condition of our moon. So now here's Mars. Mars is more intense, right? We're driven, we're ambitious, Mars is the god of war. So we can, you know, if we want a, let's say a, a, a peaceful relationship, we wouldn't go to a Mars location that's very strong. Um, I'll show you this example. This is George W. Bush. Everyone knows that George Bush, um, you know, pretty much destroyed Afghanistan and came in and bombed Iraq. Well, look at this. This is Mars on his angle of career directly over Afghanistan. The entire country is, is his Mars line. War, destruction, um, aggression, conflict, confrontation, all the shadows of Mars. And check out this. This is his Mars local space line. Goes right through Iraq and literally like over Baghdad. I, I just think it's one of the most intense examples of Mars, but not only Mars, Pluto. Remember that we said that Pluto is very intense, dramatic. Pluto is also, uh, you know, as the, the god of the underworld, can be devastating, can be destructive. Pluto on his angle of career, right over Iraq. So he's known as the bringer of Pluto, destruction, devastation. So, um, yeah, really intense. Um, here's Jupiter. So, um, for the most part, we, we usually like Jupiter lines. The, you know, the challenge that can come up with Jupiter is being overconfident, exaggerating things, being full of ourselves in some way, um, lack of boundaries. But typically we have more luck, we have more fortune. Um, it can be a great line if we're a teacher, like I said. 
Um, here's Arnold Schwarzenegger, like I said before. That's his birth chart. And if you look at the angle of career, it's Pisces. So that could be an artist, like an actor, for sure. But over in California, where he moved and took over the state, basically, he has Jupiter on the angle of career within four degrees. So Jupiter gave him all kinds of opportunities, abundance, fortune. I mean, you know, a millionaire through filmmaking. He was Mr. Olympian seven times. Jupiter is known as the biggest planet. Arnold Schwarzenegger was the biggest man, Mr. Olympus. Right? He also published uh, a magazine, and Jupiter rules publishing. He, he was a publisher early on in his, um, it was about bodybuilding. Um, so he had that symbol there. Um, and then, of course, politics. Politics, one of the signs that rules politics is Scorpio. Scorpio is on his angle of career here, what he's known for, you know, uh, big scale work, right? And then Scorpio also has to do with like, you know, some of the films he was in, which, you know, Scorpio can be very intense and like destructive. And you have films like Predator and Commando and, you know, um, Terminator, like they're, they're very Scorpionic, right? Their titles, very kind of intense and dark. And so the symbols come out in very, very powerful ways. Um, there's more to say with his chart, but here's the map. And you'll see, even though Jupiter is not directly over California, it's in the orb within four degrees. So that's pretty close. And it's definitely affecting him here, especially more in the South. Um, okay, so I'll just say that I've also taught a lot on my Jupiter line, which is going through here um, in Florida. And then um, uh, Atlanta, I've facilitated some, sh some shamanic work there, which is part of my work as well. Um, and then up in Minnesota, I've taught over here, and in Chicago over here, and Madison. These have been really successful locations for me that I, you know, I never would have really thought like Madison or Chicago. It wouldn't have jumped off like that I'd want to go there necessarily to, to go teach, but I, I did in, in many times and, um, and had a lot of, a lot of success and, and, and fortune um, and just in, enjoyed myself. Jupiter lines can just be very, very enjoyable. So, um, here's Saturn. We talked about um, responsibility, hard work, um, sometimes heaviness. Saturn lines need to be very uh, carefully negotiated, you know, depending on what we want in our lives. Here's George W. Bush again. You know, his Saturn line goes right through Austin, Texas, the capital of Texas, where he was the governor. He was in a Saturnian role. Saturn rules things like government and authority, uh, definitely political things. Um, so that's one example of that. It's also a sun location. So he was very well liked in, uh, in, in Texas. And, and when the sun is rising in a location, it can be very popular. Um, here's a sat my Saturn line in India. And uh, I spent five, uh, five weeks in Dharamsala where the Dalai Lama lives. Um, I was doing a lot of interesting things when I was in Dharamsala that connect to my Saturn. Well, I was studying music. My Saturn is in Leo, the sign of the creator and the artist and the performer. So I studied some Indian instruments there. I also learned uh, Reiki while I was there, studied Reiki. Um, I was doing a lot of um, volunteer work, teaching English, working with Tibetan refugees. Um, and this was just a place where my soul was really infused with a lot of spiritual um, guidance, information, medicine, philosophy. I was really deeply studying Tibetan Buddhism. And, uh, and I went up to Ladakh, which is up here, right on that Saturn line in the Indian, um, in, the, in the plateau up here. And um, so I kind of followed that line. And, you know, that path of study is really deep in my soul. And um, it's, it's Tantra, whether it's Indian uh, Shaiva Tantra or, or Tibetan Tantra, it really got cemented there. And Saturn in my chart, not only rules my career, but it rules the area of philosophy, the ninth house of higher education, of spiritual meaning. And so I really tapped into that here. But I also had some troubles with my health. Saturn lines by themselves can be troublesome for health because Saturn is constricting to the life force. But especially for me, I have Saturn square my sun. The square is tension or challenge. And so the sun is our life force. 
And what happened to me out there was I started developing my gluten intolerance, but I didn't know of such a thing at that time. So I was eating chapatis and like, you know, lots of bready stuff. And I was laid out. I was in a lot of pain in my stomach. Um, it was a difficult trip. Um, it was a beautiful trip, but it was difficult. Now in Calcutta, I actually played a moon role. Um, the moon is on my angle of career. And I volunteered at Mother Teresa's Center for the Dying there. And so I was nurturing. I was taking care of people. I was in this very, I was very sensitive there. And I wrote a few stories from there too, like just to the plight of everyone uh, that I was encountering in Calcutta. Um, really, really powerful place for me. It will always be with me. Um, very impressionable. And that's the moon energy again. So um, Pluto, I want to give you an example of this. And then we're going to pull up some charts. Um, so Pluto, um, like we said, empowerment, depth, good lines to study the esoteric and the occult and do psychology, but can bring a lot of intensity and, and dis destruction like we talked about. Um, control issues. Here's JFK, John F. Kennedy Jr. Um, he was assassinated on his Pluto line and his Chiron line. Here's Chiron on his angle of partnership. And then here is Pluto on the angle of career. So we, he's known for reputation, career point. Um, at that, this is the place where he was killed, Pluto. So that's a very intense example. Um, this is a, a, a better example of how you can use Pluto. This was a client, Tyler, who was American, but he moved to Germany for some time. And his business was based in, in the Eastern part of Germany. Um, I can't remember exactly where, but it's somewhere near like Leipzig, I think, very close to his Pluto line. He was, um, he created some technology that just really took off there. It's a computer-based technology and he made millions and millions. Um, so you can be very wealthy. In fact, Pluto, Pluto, the word means wealth. Uh, so again, it depends on the condition of Pluto and how well you can navigate or you know, be, be intentional with that energy. Um, this was a client friend of mine, Nolis, and he went to Bali. Okay, and like, here's Bali right here, but here's two Pluto lines. Pluto's on the angle of the home. Pluto is uh, the local space line, the directional line here. So, you know, that's pretty rare to have a crossing of two planets. And it's, it's fairly close to, to Bali. You know, it's, it's in orb. It doesn't look like it, but it is. Um, and so I told Nolis before he went, you know, um, just be really careful with your things. You know, don't be like paranoid, but, but be a little bit suspicious of, of people. Protect your stuff. Um, you know, if something's happening, don't resist, you know, because Pluto lines, the ego can get really out of control and be kind of intense with resisting things and then it gets even worse, you know? And um, he was going with a new partner. I said, you know, um, if, if any power struggles come up, just, just let them go, release and be uh, really, you know, um, ask for transformation, you know, do the shadow work and um, study Tantra. Like that's a great way of experiencing Pluto, like alchemy, sexual alchemy. So anyway, he came back from his trip like a month and a half later he told me that on the first week he was there, he was mugged like on his, his motorbike and he lost $3,000 that was in his wallet. And it was extremely intense for him and he had to call his brother to have money sent to him and all of that. So, um, but he had a great experience with his partner and they did practice sacred sexuality and deep intimacy. And, um, you know, he spent some time with the volcanoes and Pluto is symbol is the volcano uh but he he remembered the reading and and to not fight what was happening but i was like bro why did you have three thousand dollars in your, in your wallet you know um so um we have to be really careful with the pluto lines definitely for for sure so um la like one other example i want to give here and then i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up some uh charts because um i was talking to michael about juno um, we, we talked about his maps a little bit, Michael Youngblood, who's creative unsettled and here with us today. And um, Juno, maybe you haven't heard of Juno, but she's a very important asteroid. She was Jupiter or Zeus's wife and um, this great, you know, great goddess who rules in astrology things like soul contracts, like powerful collaborations in our life, marriage partners, very intimate relationships. 
um, you know, where we, we know each other on a very deep soul level. Um, but there's some conditions on love. It's not unconditional. It's like, you know, like a, like a marriage partner is. Like you, you have certain requirements if you're going to marry someone. And um, so fairness and equality in relationship is a big theme for Juno. Um, sorry, just missed that slide there. Um, here's my friend Eve. Her partner, who she's still with, it's been like 10 years for them. They make music together. He's from Sydney. Australia. She's from California or uh, somewhere in the US. And this is where Juno is on her angle of career. She makes music and does work with her partner, who's from Sydney. Um, here's a Juno line for me. One of my most significant partners in my life was born in Russia, in Krasnodar over here. Um, kind of close to this Juno line here. Very, very intense, intimate, deep connection. And, um, and then, and we'll pull up a Juno example as well uh, in a moment. And then I want to mention the nodes. The nodes are very, very important soul parts of our chart. Um, the North node emphasizes um, our soul's destiny, how we're evolving, how we're growing. The South node is a lot more about our karmas, our past lives, energies that feel very familiar. So when you go to a nodal location where these energies are strong, whoa, that's a place that a lot of times it's called you for, for your whole life. Um, there's destiny there. There's something we have to kind of work through, usually karmically. Very powerful locations, not necessarily easy locations. Um, Steve Jobs again, uh, Sunnyvale, where Apple was based, right on his nodal lines right there. I mean, the whole South Bay, which uh, Apple's moved around. So, and then forecasting. Um, I'm not going to give an example of that right now, just because I want to pull up some some charts with you here, some maps. So let me do that. I'm going to share my other screen here. Um, I know we're getting a little close with time, so um, we'll take more questions at the end here. But let me pull up the uh, the software. And if I, I think um, if if we want to have some uh, example, maybe maybe someone would like to volunteer. Um, to look up one location and just see something that's jumping out. So maybe, Claire, we could have someone volunteer for, for that. Yes, totally. If someone wants to volunteer, feel free to send me a message through the chats. You do need to have your birth time. I didn't mention this before, but the one thing with relocation astrology that's really, really significant, uh, of course, we, we, we know our birthday, um, and, and our birthplace. But the thing that, that we really need to know is birth time. If you don't have your birth time, it's really not possible to do locational astrology because it's so much based on the orbit of the earth and the time. Now, if you don't have your birth time, there's also um, a way that we can work together and we can do what's called chart rectification. And that's where I ask you a series of questions about the most significant times in your life and then we put it into the software and the software like says, okay, we think between these hours or these minutes of the day, this is when you were born, you know? And, and then we just kind of fact check that a little bit. So that's for people who don't know their birth time. It's called chart rectification. Um, do you see the map here? This like colored one? No, no, we're not seeing the screen correctly. I think we're still seeing that. Yeah. Okay. I I said, let me do um, I said desktop, but let me do parallels. Now you should see. Um, yes. Awesome. So this is one kind of map I work with um, uh, that we can work with, which is called a treasure map. And this is from, uh, I work with a number of softwares, but this one is actually, um, this is just a, a random chart here, but this is looking at the treasure map for relation, relationships for this person. And the, the stronger the, the red line is here, this is one of the more strong relational locations for this person. So when we have a particular intention, again, we can just pull up these, these treasure maps. And uh, I'll give you another example, like vocation and career, friendship and family, um, education and communication. So let's look at vocation and career for this person. And the map will take a second to load. And then you can see over here, that this is very strong 
you know? And then these are just, these are strong too, but not as strong. And then how are they strong? Well, then we have the planets up here and we can print reports and I will interpret that for the client. So that's one kind of map. And then here's another map here. And this is the main software I use. And then we have, of course, the one on Astro as well. So we have a lot of different tools we could put together. Um, let me get these other sets of lines here to not confuse you, but there's even another set of influences called parans that we can use in a location. But I'll take those off for right now, just because it's a little bit, a little bit much. And um, so you can see it's quite a complex uh, science here, but um, I just wanted, uh, M Michael, maybe you could, you could chime in here. I was going to pull up, um, we were talking about M Monterey, Mexico. Um, actually, I think it comes up on the map. And that there was a significant partnership here uh, with, with someone from Monterey. And what I noticed right away was that this was a Juno line. Remember, we just talked about Juno, committed partnership, deep soul connection, fairness and equality in relationship. And this is Juno on the angle of relationship. So not only is she a relationship uh, planet or asteroid, but she's in the area of relationship. So that's like a double symbol. We're like, huh, there's something going on here. And also because this is where the nodal line is right here, see this local space, and here's the symbol for the nodes. This is what I was saying, where there's some kind of destiny here, um, our soul is being pulled here. It's fairly close to Monterey right here. It goes actually down through Guadalajara, exactly, and then some of the locations along the coast here. But um, yeah, did you wanna say anything about that, Michael? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to, to reply. So yeah, there's um, uh, significant someone in, in, from, from Monterey. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll share two things like the, the relationship has felt like a, a sense of, of destiny to it when we first met, mm. that those are words that I'd probably had asked had I not heard, uh, my, my chart reading here. Mm -hmm. Um, it just had this very kind of spiritual energy pulling us together. And, um, and it's, it's really interesting. Something I saw today that didn't show up in our conversation yesterday was uh, you described Juno as a, a conditional love, and um, and you know her and I have had more conversations around defining unconditional and conditional love um, than I've ever had with somebody in my life, and um, and we joke. I've joked with her on the, you know the conditional elements of of love in, in our relationship, uh, and so it's it's really funny to see that on on the screen today. Wow, that's that's really, yeah, it's really amazing. Um, Thanks for that share. And then I, I, I just, I really want to mention that um, when we first talked, I was talking about Colorado. Um, and what I saw was, I was really fascinated with this line, these two lines right here that everyone can see. Um, because Michael has Venus and Mars very close in his chart in this near the same degree. And so wherever he goes around the world, they'll always be very close to each other. So we think because Mars and Venus, as I said at the beginning, are the, the represent, representative of the god and the goddess or the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine, that these would be locations where relationships would be a dominant theme for, for, for sure. Um, and then we would wanna go deeper and we wanna say, well, what sign is Venus and Mars in? What house do they rule? What house do they live in? You know, uh, like permanently. And one of the things that I, I saw was Venus and Mars are in his 11th house, which is the area of community. And, and tribe and like our soul family or people that have the same goals and causes as us. So it's like, okay, wow. So Colorado is a double Venus and Mars location because Venus and Mars are also rising here. Like right along where most of the cities and where most people live in Colorado, I live there myself. So I know this is um, right along that, the, you know, the 25 and that freeway there. And, um, and so we were talking and it's like, well, v well, Venus rises, where Venus rises is a place we love the culture. We love to be very, usually physical, like in the nature, like loving the beauty of a location. We also can be more about like our own aesthetics. Like we get more concerned with how we look and appear and just being more, you know, being more friendly as a person, uh, Venus. But Mars rising, we're driven. We can be entrepreneurial. We can be motivated. We can be a leader. So both of those are happening. And then down in the South, we have the local space lines, 
the directional energies. So down here, it's like, whoa, this is a double Venus-Mars combination going on here. Um, and we know that relationships, both friendship and love, could be very involved. So did you want to say anything about um, Colorado? Yeah. Um, first, I'll say you, you said today at the beginning, you know, there may be some uh, healthy uh, here in the room today. And healthy, healthy I would, I would healthy skeptics uh, oh, around okay. astrology in the room today. You said that, and, and I would probably fall into that category. Uh, so I wanted to preface that, and, and then I wanted to share, and we started talking yesterday, like, you know, this southern, kind of southwestern corner of Colorado, really from the yellow line um, left in the southern half of Colorado, has had some of the most kind of meaningful, uh, held the most meaning in my life, and, and I'll quickly share three to five stories. Like one, you know, my my dad always, he's not a guy who travels a lot and, and not much out of, you can see my uh, birth there in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, but he always told us stories growing up of when he went on this Boy Scout backpacking trip in Southwest Colorado. And like, I could get down to the details of like, you know, him catching trout. And it was like the most amazing experience of my father's life. So, so my point is there's almost this multi-generational draw towards this corner of Colorado. Um, you know, one thing that my business partner, uh, John and I, who I think is here today, uh, one thing that we did together is, is when we were first starting Unsettled, we joined an accelerator program in Telluride, Colorado. Now, most accelerated programs are in places like Silicon Valley or in New York, um, but why in the world would a, a town of about a thousand people have an accelerator program for a, a travel company like us? Um, I don't know, but we went there and spent two weeks and it was a really foundational period for my relationship with John because we weren't talking about business per se. We were talking a lot about as two founders, how we show up as humans to this business um, is really what's going to drive our success or not, not how well we can you know, do financial projections and things of that nature. And, and then, you know, maybe the last one or two things I'll share is um just you know, real quick uh there. tell you right is like right here right like yeah a little bit towards that lake down there that, that you see yeah. on the map yeah and okay um, cool just so people know where that is so it's pretty like right smack in the and a lot of these <laughs> um you know the 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 significant other you know that we talked about from monterey her and i are have a, have a list of places where we're looking at, at properties and places to move uh, this corner of, of Colorado is, is the top. It's been the top of the list. It's moved around a couple of times. Um, and, and the last thing I'll share is, you know, since I took a vacation to this corner of Colorado when I was like 11 years old, you know, it was like a big deal for my family to like all get in the car, drive across the country. And when I saw those mountains, I was 10 or 11 years old. I said to myself, like, one day I'm going to live here. I, I felt this natural draw to this place. Like I've never felt in my life. And uh, two years ago, I was living in Vail. Uh, which is probably right where the white and the black line basically overlap yeah. up there. Yeah. Um, and, and I gave this talk on entrepreneurship um, and, and I, I shared everybody there in Val of like how I had this vision when I was 11 years old, like what 11 year old kids have visions of living somewhere that I was always going to live in Colorado and that, you know, travel was going to somehow take me there. And so I was giving a talk to this room packed full of entrepreneurs there and it was just like a full circle coming back to me, realizing this vision that I had when I was little, uh, coming around to it. So, you know, had you not told me what Astro Locality was and you just said, hey, Michael, what are some of the most powerful places in the planet for you that you've been to? Somebody who's traveled a lot, I would say like the southwestern side of Colorado, without a doubt, is, is the highest. That's incredible. I, thanks so much for sharing the story. <laughs> Mike, that, that's the kind of stories that like, you know, I've. I've, I've been blessed to like give and receive like for 14 years now. And like, that's why I love this work because it's just like, how, how, I don't know. <laughs> cause it's magic. Cause it's, it's medicine. Cause we're, we're all one. And, and as the hermeticists and all the esoteric traditions have taught as above, so below, you know, we have this ability to, to, uh, to perceive our, our sacred work here, you know, whether that's about entrepreneurialism or about finding love and finding our heart's passion and, we have this great tool that, that can show us where these things can just flow for us. And so I want to pull up another chart and, uh, and give an example of, of, of a place. If somebody's curious about one location, we can look at that, um, you know, and, and just see what's there and just kind of riff off of it for a few minutes. 
Yeah, and then I, I can close I, up. Yeah, go ahead. No, sorry. I just sent you uh, via the chat. I think if you stop sharing, you're going to see it. Uh, some of the information, or do, or do you want me to tell you now? How do you prefer? I just sent you a message with the first person that told us uh, their information. Yeah, just tell me. Yeah, okay. So it's August the 8th. Who is it? It's B. Oliver was the first person that uh, actually sent us the information. B, like? B. Okay, all right. And then what's the birthday? Yeah, so it's August the 8th, 8th, 1977. Okay, what time? Um, 1.46 a.m. Okay. And Springfield, M.A. So where do you want to look at, B? Could we actually look at New York City, Manhattan, sure. to get that specific? Where do you live right now? That's where I live right now, and it's not, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, my, my, Energetically, I'm, I'm thinking it's not a place for me. Well, okay. So the first thing, you live very close to where you were born. So a lot of the chart is similar. Um, you know, as soon as you get to a new longitude, then things start to shift. The chart starts to rotate and you won't see, you know, you'll have different, much different influences. So if you go to like the next time zone, you know, things start to shift a lot more. So that's one consideration. Right. Um, the thing I want to move. Oh, go on. I'm sorry. The thing that jumps off is that you have this Sun Saturn combination in New York City, and mm -hmm. and I believe you have the. If I come back to your birth chart, because we have to get the story, you have Sun Saturn together in your chart in Leo, and so the thing with that is that you 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 know being in this location, you could develop like creative energy, Leo energy, or performance energy, or leadership energy, but it would come through a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work, a lot of patience. Um, maybe at times you'd feel heavy. You could have some, maybe, maybe health issues, maybe pushing too hard, or like that Saturn quality where we're just, we're, we're kind of grinding a bit. Um, but over time, there could be some success, depending on a lot of other factors. Yeah, that's actually very accurate. I have chronic fatigue, oh, and um, but I'm still also uh, very, very active in the arts and really pushing hard for my career, but meeting a lot of resistance. So it feels very Saturnine, and my experiences here with loss have also been very much like that. So. So, yeah. Wow, I'm, I'm sorry about the chronic. So design. accurate. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> um, I want to actually move, but um, I well, want to move to Canada. Everything is so, you know, crazy now. I don't know what uh, yeah. you know what will happen at this point, but yeah. Well. Um, I will say that. just one other thing about Saturn. Saturn at, at times, especially when he's so close to our sun and our chart, it can bring us to depression, you know? And so we have to be kind of careful because Saturn is a, is a heavy energy at times and it, it can be difficult to negotiate. We'd have to look at other parts of the chart. So just for everyone to know, you know, it's not like just avoid Saturn. It's not like that, but it's more like, you know, we, we have to be aware that, that there's going to be some things that are going to feel tough, that are going to feel like difficult on Saturn minds. And that could be our physical health, especially with Saturn on the sun. That's what happened to me in India. You know, with Saturn, I have Saturn square my sun and I was right on my Saturn and sun line. So I got that story really intense. That's what we mean. So we have to look at a lot of layers there. And, you know, with travel right now for everyone and with relocating, I know it's it's difficult. Uh, maybe it's about looking at places in the country you're at right now. Maybe it's um, also just planning ahead, you know, looking forward to the next trip or where you might want to relocate and that there's, you know, you can put your radar up to all these different locations. And um, 
and that's why I have, um, you know, I'll, I'll share with you the, the website. You guys can go check out. And if you want to learn more about relocation astrology, I have some videos up there. And then I, I have a special for people today where I've taken $100 off the, the second kind of reading. There's a few different kinds of relocation readings I do, depending on how deep you go. And then I also have a report. And I think all of that's going to be put in the chat for you. So you can check that out. Um, I do, uh, you know, I want to close it at, at the half hour here. We have about 10 more minutes. And maybe I can share just a little bit about what's happening right now and give some context and maybe take a couple more questions before we head off. Does that sound good? That sounds perfect. Yeah, we have a couple of questions. Uh, so if we have some minutes for that, that would be great. Okay, let me uh, come back to uh, the keynote. And then, um, so the main thing I, I just wanted everyone to know about right now, um, we're in coyote times here, let me throw lights on, which is, uh, you know, coyote is a trickster. And it's really important because we have a lot of misinformation going on in the sky right now. Um, Gemini, the, the nodes, the eclipses are, are in Gemini and Sagittarius. And we have to be really careful with, with what we consider truth um, and really question everything. This is so true in America with the politics and with the election coming in. Um, and so Coyote is a great spirit animal for this because he is the trickster. And we have to really take everything with some lightness right now and some humor. It's, you know, that's why I have here um, Alice from Alice in Wonderland. What road do I take? Well, where are you going? Says the cat, I don't know. Then it doesn't matter. If you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. And there's kind of that, kind, that spirit right now where a lot of us don't know where we're going. Part of that is because Neptune is square the nodes the collective evolution, the, no, the nodes, um, Neptune is, is in a challenging relationship to that. And that can bring confusion for a lot of us, uncertainty, um, kind of a fog, but it can also bring a, a real spiritual infusion. And this is a time where, like, if we're studying mystical traditions, we're doing dream work, we're working with the archetypes like we're talking about today, we're studying mythology, we have a lot of opportunity for soul growth collectively and personally. And so it's less about, I got to figure it all out for next year, where it's more about, like, I got to get connected to my soul and to a larger purpose here. And that's super important right now. Also because Mars and Mercury are retrograde. One of them by themselves is difficult to deal with, but both of them are retrograde. Mercury went just last week, he's there for two more weeks. Um, Mercury rules technology and travel, communication, you know, all of our computers and all that stuff. So it's crazy right now because Mercury is opposite Uranus. Now Uranus is an inventive and innovative planet. And so we can be getting a lot of downloads, a lot of epiphanies, a lot of realizations, revelations, especially around metaphysics like astrology because Uranus rules those things. But because of an opposition with Uranus, Mercury can bring a lot of erratic or chaotic energies to our communications, to our technologies. I know I'm preparing for a big online event I'll tell you about in a minute, but man, the, the, the Mercury retrograde has been super intense, just trying to get the technology for performance together, to be able to record things and get the sound correct. It's just been like, whoa, a lot. So I'm sure there's something similar for everyone where there's like, whoa, or I, you're getting some sudden information and it takes you on a different path than you were thought you were going. So be open right now. Be experimental with the kinds of things that you're learning about, like today. Um, but you kind of expect curveballs. You expect things to be a little bit different. And yes, um, Mercury will go direct on election day in the US. The day that Mercury goes direct is the most chaotic day of the year. There's like six of those days when Mercury's changing direction and the information is just all over the place. The energy can be very chaotic. So again, with Mercury retrograde, it's a time to plan. It's a time to integrate the last three months, but it's not a time usually to make big final decisions also because of Mars retrograde. Um, so we're not signing contracts, you know, um, like big, big contracts right now. That's not the Mercury retrograde thing. Um, 
but also Mars. Mars is retrograde until November 15th. And Mars rules our desires, our pursuits, what we want. Um, a lot of us don't know what we want right now. We're not really sure. I mean, we want clarity, but that, that doesn't tell us specifically necessarily what we want. We don't know quite what's motivating us. This can be true for our relationships, what we're passionate about. Is this the right direction for me to be going in? Mars is squaring Saturn which can also bring some frustration into our life. Like we can't get what we want right away. We're just not going to. For some of us, it might be travel. You know, I'd love to be abroad right now, but I can't be really much as an American. Um, it might be something else, right? So we have to make peace with time, Kronos, Saturn. We have to look to the long-term goals in our life and long-term objectives and be more strategic with step-by-step -step growth as if we're building a pyramid. You don't build a pyramid overnight. You build an architectural plan first. You become more strategic and really lay out why you want to build this because it's going to be hard work. And I'm sure a lot of us are feeling that. Also, Mars with Pluto in a square, it's an invitation for us to dig deeper, to ask why, to study the esoteric, to do the shadow work, to do ceremony and shamanic work. So Pluto asks us to go in and investigate our soul. And Mars is driving that process really big right now. Mars is as bright as it will be in the sky for the next 20 years. So I really recommend everyone to get out and see Mars. He's opposite the sun, so he's super bright. Um, you'll see him in the early uh, or in the around 8, 8 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock at night. Super beautiful. And Jupiter and Saturn you can also see in the night sky very close to each other. They're about to leave Capricorn finally and go into Aquarius, but not until the middle of December. Um, so um, I'll just say two quick things about the US elections. Uh, this was from my, I did like a three hour talk about this. So if anyone's interested in knowing about Trump and Biden and Harris and Pence and the US chart and the fate of the US and something called the Pluto return, which is the death and rebirth cycle of a country. That's what the US is going through right now and going into even bigger in the next three years. So I talk all about that. It was a donation-based class, so you could pay what you want if you're interested to know more, but um, this was a slide from it. And what I was talking about a lot is how we're not gonna know any results right away because everything will probably be taken to the Supreme Court. It's really strong in the astrology of what's happening because of the Mercury retrograde and the Mars retrograde and just a lot of the symbols going on really suggest that, you know, we're in for quite a ride in the next couple months, um, especially the inauguration chart, which looks quite intense, even very volatile or violent or like protest. You know, we could see that protests and rebellious or revolutionary energy is like really kind of surging, especially in the U S. Um, so, that's something that uh, we just need to kind of be prepared for here. These are high um, headlines from a, a, an article um, that you could check out uh, online uh, from the Atlantic about election day, like if you search that. Um, I won't spend too much time with this. We're at the, toward the end of the, the, uh, the talk here, but just coming up, we have a full moon um, on Halloween, very strong. And um, like I was saying, this Jupiter-Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which is right here in the sky, this has been dominating our whole year. You know, Jupiter's been in Capricorn. That's a sign that Jupiter does not like to be in. It's called his sign of his fall. Why? Because Jupiter wants to travel and expand and teach. And guess what? In Capricorn, limitation, constriction, not possible, right? Everything with the airlines, everything with COVID. Um, even not being able to go to school and education, right? Um, really interesting, challenging symbolism. We hope that some of this will lessen as Jupiter and Saturn move into the sign of Aquarius, which is about community, building relationships with each other, friendships, finding our cosmic tribe, innovation. It's going to accelerate like crazy next year. Uh, in December, I'll give a, a talk about the astrology of next year, and we've got a lot of big stuff coming in with Saturn squaring Uranus. Um, but yeah, this is a challenging uh, chart for the U.S. on Election Day. Mercury squares the U.S. Mercury. So 
that there's going to just be a lot of confusion and a lot of different storylines going on what's really happening and you know what's behind the scenes and so there's a lot more if you if you want to look at the uh, the class um and i'll just i'll i'll stop that there and then um i just want to mention to everyone here there's going to be a link in the chat this is this amazing event i'm so blessed to be a part of i'm, I'm co-facilitating a summit, an online event with uh, Jocelyn Mercado of Sacred Planet. And this is called the 2021 Initiation Portal, Embracing the Mystery to Catalyze Our Visionary Future. So we have 35 different speakers, shamans, channels, artists, musicians, uh, astrologers. I'll be teaching, I'll be also doing music live with guitar and also DJing. Um, it's gonna be like a, a ceremony and a festival and an online conference all, all as, at one time. So um, it's five days, it's free. So we want everyone to you know, come and join us as much as you can. So the link is there, it's 2021-initiationportal.com. And if anyone is interested in, in looking at their astral locality or doing time mapping, any kind of business or personal coaching with astrology or with human design, that's my main work and you can, uh, you know, you can find me here at divinetimingcoaching.com or findyourpowerplaces.com. And there's also another uh, link uh, in the box there for um, the website where I've been doing a lot of teaching this year. So if you'd like to study like through some webinars, I have a class on medical astrology. Um, I also have 10 or 11 online classes at basic astrology, like the planets, the signs, the houses. That's at my online school, uh, which will also be in the, the chat. Uh, divine timing online school dot com. So um, let's take one question before we, you know, however long we we have here. I'm happy to go over a couple minutes, but um, yeah, I know that there were some questions in uh, in the chat. So yes, yes, we had we we did have some great questions, and you know, as you said, we we can stay here for a couple of more minutes. We understand that you know may, maybe many of us have to go, and that's that's completely fine. We just put all. Uh, the links that you mentioned in chat so if you want to learn more please uh you can you know you can uh go in there and and do a little bit more research uh on this fascinating work um i have selected just a couple of questions we're not going to be able to get to all of them um, but the first question that i think it's really interesting is what happens to those places in the world that are not close to any lines at all they just aren't optimal places to be or what's what's the deal with those places? Uh, so it just means that there's less dynamic energy there. It's not it's not like telling us that that there are these specific uh, archetypes or parts of your soul that will be activated there. So it's less um, yeah like potentially less intense or strong in a, in the particular way. So it doesn't mean that it, nothing will happen there. And a lot of times we might want to live somewhere where there's not a dominant planetary line because we don't want a lot of strong, you know, energies going off in a location. Um, but we really, we, we would need to look at the relocated chart to get a full interpretation of what is, you know, what's going on there. Because you have different signs ruling different houses. So there's different influences going on. And, um, and so, it's never really um, nothing's happening there, if that makes sense. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And then another question um, is, when relocating, does latitude or longitude play a major role? And how many degrees average can make a difference? Yeah, that, that's exactly what we're studying. When we look at locational astrology, everything is latitude and longitude. That's, that's all it is. It's just that... Um, and, and it's how much? Well, I mean, you know, the, the city next to your city, maybe not super strong. But when you go across the state or the province, right, or the country, now we're talking about big differences. And so, um, again, like I said, if you move a time zone away, you're going to see the chart is going to rotate. It's going to be, you'll have like a potentially a different rising sign, right? So, so you start to, your chart starts to get influenced in very different ways um, when you start to move both longitude and latitude. The latitude, like those are those other sets of lines that I was talking about. 
the Parans. It's how the Egyptians did astrology. There are these yellow lines. So um, that's something I've found is, is also very accurate and, and tells us a lot. Um, so when I work with clients, I use those sets of lines. I use three different sets of lines, a few different kinds of mapping technology. So it's very thorough. And um, yeah, so that's, uh, I think that's good for that, that question. I hope that answered that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and we had a question around uh, the tool that you use, right, or the website that you use uh, to see these maps. Like, is this something that's available for us or this is something, it's a specific software? Um, it's part of my astrology software. Um, the astrology software is called Solar Fire. It's, uh, I think, $300 or something. Um, and yeah, um, so it's part of my astrology software, but Locational astrology is a very, uh, very complex science. Um, and that's why I, so what I do when I work with clients is we have our conversation, we lay out the locations, we look at all the different maps, we talk about the intentions. I also send reports to people. But if you just read reports on your own, you're not getting that context again. So I always just try to emphasize, you know, try not to take this stuff too much out of context because you, you won't get the full story and uh, you don't want to make the big decisions in your life when you don't have a, a fuller story. So, um, yeah, but it's good to get some ideas. Like I do, I have a report that I could send people that has um, the top 75 locations for different areas, like romance, for creativity, for uh, business. Um, and, and that's really cool. You know, like you could look at like just in the States or in the States in Europe, for instance, and you could start to be like, wow, I never, I never even heard of that place or thought about it. And it can start to put that into your worldview. And then, then you would want to look deeper at that through more of a reading and see, okay, what's really going on here? What are my intentions? So that's how you would really get confident in moving to a location. Okay. I think with, with that question, we are ready to wrap up. Do you want to say a couple of more things before uh, it kills us out? Um, just... Um, Here's, here's a website you guys could go to with all, all the different classes that have been going on this year. Um, so this is uh, divine dash timing dash coaching. And then my main website with the astral locality and all the different services is divine timing coaching.com or find your power places. Here's the event. Like I was saying, the 2021 initiation portal, all the different teachers and speakers. So just hope everyone can join us there. And just want to thank you like this has been so much fun um just thank the whole unsettled community for first of all for joining unsettled um you know i had a great experience in colombia and i know some of you guys have been all over the world with them and um just what a great organization and the, the teachings this month and last month so far have been amazing so thanks to everyone who's taught and who's taken in all of this great information and just uh really really uh fun to share this my favorite topic you know in astrology with with everyone today um i'd love to read the chat so i hope i can get a copy of the chat um and um and yeah if also if, if you if, you know if you don't want to do astral locality but you're just more interested in like a birth chart or you want to look at like a couple's chart you know i do a lot of couples readings and um we can totally do that and um and if you've heard of human design that's another big part of, of coaching that I really recommend everyone check out. It's so helpful for uh, your decision making and just really feeling confident at these crazy times. Well, thank you so much, Verda and Luz, for this amazing uh, presentation. We're going to be sending you the chat for sure because you received a lot of love and thank you notes and so on. So thank you so much. This was amazing. Um, and we will be sending more information in Slack with your, uh, you know, with this presentation, if you want, and also the links for those Wait, of you. Somebody who are... asked a question about the discounted reading. Yeah. I just saw that. Sure. Um, it's on that link. It should be on that link. So there's, um, I have a few of those available, three of those available, but it's it's already there. Like it, it's crossed out the the price, and then the uh, the new price is there. So if you go to the Astro Locality link, you'll see it there. Just want to make sure that they.
Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who are not part of the Global Passport, we're going to be sending the recording via email as well. And uh, feel free to jump into our website and see all of the amazing things that we have going on this um, month of storytelling. We have a connect session tomorrow, coffee and vulnerability, and then a writing hour, a journaling writing hour on Thursday. So thank you so much for joining and see you all soon. Bye for now. Ciao, guys.